Hi everyone, I welcome you again another video tutorial on BBA plugin. In this video, we're going to look at the potential of BBA in doing parametric design and creating production parts for something like a shelf that can be parametrically modified. So in this uh, example, I'm going to build with you a shelf which has got um, n number of divisions that you can parametrically alter and this is assumed to be made using some sort of uh, bot joints which are going to be glued at these sides so uh, we're going to assume we're going to glue this together and then we also assume that we can um, sort of um, slide in our dividers into these um, locations that we provide using lap joints so I'm just ignoring all the practicality that has to be taken into account for this tutorial. Just uh, we're going to focus on the workflow and how we can actually do this in a parametric way. So let's begin with uh, opening the Grasshopper. So here's my Grasshopper definition and we're going to look at a few things before uh, we actually start the start to build the shelf itself. Um, I have divided the whole process into uh, two parts. Uh, first uh, part is going to be creating the sketch model, which is essentially this object here. Um, so I'm going to disable the assembly for now. Okay. And I'm also assuming you have a decent knowledge of Grasshopper and you can actually build um, this model um, yourself and it's not really complicated you can see that uh, what i have done here i have defined a few parameters the the depth which is the depth of the shelf this shelf is going to be hanged on the wall or something so then you have the height you can control the height of the shelf you have the length and you can independently change the divisions which you would like to have. So the way I've done this is that I am creating a cross-section rectangle on the YZ plane. So you can see that YZ plane is given for the rectangle. And then I have actually exploded the rectangle. I have taken out the, the front segment and then using the other three segments left in the rectangle I have created an extrusion which you can see now here that's the extrusion and this is the, the, the green line is just the three segments of the rectangle and this is how I came up with the main uh, let's say the main body of the shelf um, then on the other hand I um, basically uh, push the rectangle half length in the direction of the negative x so uh, basically the beginning of the shelf and then I build the surface out of this rectangle and and I copy that again um, using this value which is essentially the number of um, dividers and and all together I do have uh, the sketch model for my um, parametric shelf so um, let's hide everything else so you can see that's not so complicated and you probably can easily do it in a different way all you need to have is some additional um, geometry we're going to need some planes uh, especially the plane on the top and uh, in the back so I basically extracted this plane the one on the top is just the XY plane which has moved in the Z direction as much as you have the height of the shelf and the um, plane which is uh, here in the back is X Z plane that move in the direction of Y axis uh, with a factor of um, depth uh, so it, once you change the depth you always have the, the back plane over here now let's talk about how we're going to build this using Biba. Um, 
So I'm going to do everything from here again. So let's just um, delete this. So we start with uh, building a planar polysurface from the sketch model. So this is our sketch model. It's connected to the um, a PPS component. And then um, we also need uh, to set our shell type. I'm just using the top surface, a negative shell for now. It doesn't really matter for this tutorial to, to change um, the shell type. Um, so let's keep it. Another thing which you need to define is the join type. So I'm going to use a bot join for now for all the edges. Now we're going to see what happens when I enable this assembly. So the assembly here gets uh, disassembled and then um, I use the unfold uh, component to unfold this and then I can see now um, the unfolded as well as the the parts in, in 3D view. So let's go back and hide our original original sketch so we can have a better view of what's happening. Uh, one thing that you, if you notice, um, wherever there is a line segment in my sketch, it is considered as an individual edge. So if I look at the unfolded parts, you can actually see uh, from each segment, we have produced uh, one individual part. And this is not what we actually want because we want to have a single part over there and single part over here. Here's a very uh, important thing with the, with the joints in Biba. And most of the joints allow you to do that. You can actually join the coplanar sheets or coplanar parts around an edge. So what that means that if I, if I check this, then I suddenly get one part on the top and one part on the bottom. That means each two parts that are coplanar, basically they are they're sharing the same plane, and they are sharing the same edge, they're going to merge together, becomes one part. So because I'm using single bot join for all the joints here, then the, all the joints have this property that sharing a plane, the parts across these edges are going to be merged together to make one single part. So that's very nice because that was just one single click. However, we still want to change this to, to the different joint that we want. So basically, we want to have a groove here so the divider can slide in. Also, in the back, we want to have a groove so that slider can go all the way in and um, can be safely um, inserted. So I need to find a way to distinguish between these joints, which I wanted to create a groove, and the other joints, which I want to leave them as they are. You might probably think that just like previous video uh, tutorial that we use um, edge selection or we use labeling to define the edge labels and then change the join type over there. We can do this here. That's true. We can do this. But the problem with that would be when we come back here and then, for example, change the number of divider to three then we're going to have problem because those edges are not uh, are no longer the same. We need to find a parametric way to do that. And that's where the, the filters in BIPA becomes very handy. So in BIPA, we have a set of filters that we can filter the edges using some certain characteristics. So I have to look for something that is um, really specific to those edges that I want to change. And that is actually, let's go back to this um, sketch model. I'm just going to hide the preview, turn on the model. And if you look closely to those edges that we want to actually change or modify the joint type there, uh, are those with three parts um, connected to them. So let's say this edge has a part on the right, a left, and one on the top. And this edge has one on the left, one on the right, and one at the bottom. So they always have three parts. We could use actually this property to filter these edges and use it for 
um, and, and basically extract it from the model and then assign a join type to it. So we go over here uh, on the P under PPS tools and there's uh, here a filter called uh, filter edges by number of connected polygons and that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's create that filter somewhere next to our uh, planar poly surface. So what you need to provide is a planar poly surface and you also need to provide the minimum and maximum um, connected uh, face or, or part. In this case, is both are actually three because you could potentially say, okay, I want to have edges with minimum number of two or minimum number of three and maximum number of five parts. We have such a model, but in this particular case, we are looking for the edges that they are connected to three parts only. So I'm just creating slider with three and then let's go connect to both of the inputs here. And now I do have the edges here. So you can see now uh, so six locally defined values, six indexes are found. That's actually true because we have six edges that have this property. So now what we need is to pro create, um, let's say, lap join because that would be, that actually will give us the proof. So here the lap join. And then we want to say, okay, the lap join is only applied to these edges and don't forget to flatten out the join type this is important and then we're going to connect that to our assembly well, let's turn on the preview and we just switch off this one i just use the custom preview just for a better um, presentation here so you can see now that we treated these uh, joints, even the one in the back, with a different uh, kind of join type. Um, but again, we we got the uh, same problem that we had with the bot join, because now we have three parts at each join, and that's not uh, what we were looking for. We were looking for a continuous part over the top and the bottom. And uh, so we already know what's the problem. We just need to join the core planar sheet. So you can see that almost all the join types will have this option. So doing that, we got our uh, little um, groove and everything uh, looks good. Okay, the last thing you may want to do is to flip this joint here uh, because I think it's not nice to have these grooves up there and I prefer to have them in the back where it's just hang on the wall. Um, so in order to do that, you need to find this particular edge. So one thing is uh, common between these three edges. They are all in the top plane so that we can use this fact. And the second thing is they they are also in the, in the back plane. So they are actually in the intersection of these two planes. So having said that, we can actually look for the edges that are within a plane. Um, using this filter. It's called filter edges within a plane. So this again will require a um, poly surface which we will provide and then we also ask for a plane. So as I explained before I already provide some planes here. So we wanted the edges that are both in this plane and uh, which is the, I think this was the back plane, yes. So this is the back plane, I already named this. So these are the edges all in the back plane. As you can see, there are 10 edges. So all the, if I just go back and turn on my sketch. So here we have 10 edges that are within this back plane. We can easily count them. Three on the top, three on the bottom, and then uh, four uh, vertical edges. So altogether three, uh, altogether ten. And then we also need. I'm just going to copy paste that. Um, the 
edges on the top plane. So this is my top plane. I uh, so I would just connect that as well to this. And now this gives us 10 more edges. But we are interested in the edges that are actually common between these two sets. So if you're familiar with Grasshopper, you can actually intersect sets and then find the items that belongs to both sets. Um, I think that's the wrong one. Let me just check set intersection. Now that was OK. Um, so I connect that to the union um, component, and it gives me a three edges, which I assume that's correct because I am just looking for those three edges. Um, so let's see if I can flip that. So now what we need to do is to define another bot join type because these edges are are um, uh, they 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 have been assigned to a bot joint and the bot joint we don't like the the way it is configured so we want to just flip it so we are going to copy that bot joint here and then we change the configuration and then we simply say okay this will be applied only on these edges and we add it to our assembly so now we can see that is flipped and we can actually see um, um, let, let me just uh, okay I had another component moved him a little bit further so he doesn't uh, clash with the original uh, geometry so you can see now um, if I bake it layer one so now I have a, um, the part in the uh, I'm not sure is it the back or the top I guess this was the back or no, this is the top and the bottom yes and this is the one in the back and the the one on the front and then dividers I believe so if I now come back to my parameters and alter them in any way I can see that I get the, um, the actual geometry updated um, the nesting is updated however the joints and everything we set up there are perfectly um, stable and we follow what the rules that we set up I hope um, you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching and see you next time